everybody, it's Aiden here once again, and welcome back to the channel as it's time to do something that I believe I should have done a very long time ago, or started doing a very long time ago. Now today, we're going to be looking at Motec i2 Pro, which is a piece of software that allows us to analyse data captured in our factor 2 or other sims, and then we can use that data to see where we've lost time or whatever, because, you know, we might not actually see it on the cameras, or we may have done something subconsciously that lost a bit of time. You know, maybe that's a lift through a flat-out corner because your balls weren't big enough to keep your foot buried. You were too long coming off the gas and getting on the brake, or perhaps you're bouncing off the limiter on a straight. So, what is Motec? Well, Motec is used by a lot of sim racers, and I've recently registered interest in testing a new mod for r 2, so I figured I'd get on board, see what it's all about, and I can use that in the development of this mod. Now, normally in, in one of these sorts of videos, what people would do is sort of go through the installation process with you but I don't actually need to because it's so easy to get it done now uh, what you need to do to get the the main uh, program of Motec is you go to the Motec website and you go if uh, this works properly there we go you just simply download the version of i2 Pro for whichever uh, system you're using now I use the 64-bit uh, version of Windows 10 so I use 64-bit I think everybody's going to be on 64-bit around now for gaming so if I go to the features list we have two really cool features in this uh, software one of them is uh, it's called synchronized video and that's really useful because in R Factor 2 you can load in a replay file into Motec and it will play both the telemetry and the video so you can go oh okay I locked up here or tyres are really overheating here, why? Oh yeah, it's because I went too deep or I went through the corner too quick, but if I stay on the apex and come in using this line and, and so on. And all this is free by the way, although there are licenses that you can buy for some of the more advanced features, but really unless you're a real racing team then it's not really needed. And you can, you can print the data to view at your leisure, but I don't think my other half would appreciate me tossing and turning all night and her going, Hey, you're not sleeping. What's bothering you? I'm <laughs> bottoming out into my rouge. Now, all you've got to do here is simply download the software, run the installer, and that's it. You're good to go. And uh, this will allow you to view the data, so it's all very, very simple to get started. Now, to actually capture the data, you need to go to uh, the RFX2 forums and download Lazar's DAM plugin, which is Data Acquisition for Motec plugin. And it's a simple exe file. Download to somewhere on your computer and just run it. And then you just have to say no when it asks if you agree to contact uh, contact Motec if you have a problem or it will just boot you out of the installer since this is not a Motec endorsed plugin. If you contact Motec, they're just going to go yo yo, which translates to you're on your own. Now it all runs automatically when you uh, actually start racing. You may have seen guys like Mitchie Hoyer or Jimmy Broadbent when they go out on a test run, you'll hear this bloop, 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 and that's basically Motec logging the data for them. Uh, and I will leave all the links for all this in the description box for you so you don't have to look at my address bar and go, hang on, uh, what, forum.studio- oh god, no, that's too long to type in. Now, if you want the Assetto Corsa or iRacing version, uh, or the plugins for those to be able to view them in Motec, uh, there's this really cool new tool you can use. It's called Google. It's fantastic, and I really think it's going to go places. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up our factor 2, we're going to go out, do a couple of laps, log a time, gather some data, and then we'll load it into iPro 2 and see what we can gather from the data. Now, we're not going to go after the useless data, like the Desert Eagle in, uh, in Counter-Strike has the same fire rate as the beat to Toto's Africa. Who knew? And uh, we'll just see how difficult it is to get it working, how difficult it is to understand how easy it is to read and, you know, all that stuff uh, so we can get it working how we want it and see if uh, idiots like me can use it. So without messing around too much, we'll pick a car, we'll pick a track and we'll see what we can get out of it. So here we are then at a moderately cloudy Silverstone, temperature 16, ambient 16 track. I've got a setup loaded. We're in the 25th, uh, sorry, 2013 mod by uh, Sompir, later updated by Frankie in the physics and Bjorn in the textures for DX11. So when I click on race here, you'll hear Motec kick in, and that will mean it's started to log the data and also tell you in the bottom left that it's logging the data. And then all we've got to do is drive. There we go, did you hear that? Cool. Anyway, pluck first gear, and off we go. Two flying laps. 
should be enough to, to cover us, I think. Not going for lap records, not going for anything in particular. We're just, we're just capturing data. I think two laps will be enough. And then we can use uh, the data across the two laps to see which is which, if you see where I'm coming from. Be interesting to see what the tyres look like at the end of the, the se uh, session. 2013 tyres didn't last particularly long, so there is that to take into account. And I can't remember what tyres they took to Silverstone. I think it was these and the mediums. So this would have been the softer compound, the uh, option tyre for that race. So I'm expecting these to fall off anyway. This probably would have only been good for about 15 laps or so. So we've already taken a percent out. Let's see what kind of temperatures we get through here. This is where... I mean, a lot of front-end sliding. So maybe some adjustments to camber or something like that. Maybe a couple more clicks of front wing. That might do it, but... Not going to touch the... Uh, DRS button. Keep the data. Control. It's starting to sound like a science experiment, isn't it? You don't teach anymore, Aiden. Physics was a big part of what I used to teach, though. Just putting that out there. Teaching studio engineering as well as just more normal music. So we did a lot of physics. The inverse square law and the Doppler effect and things like that. If you don't know what the Doppler effect is, as I've just <laughs> destroyed my front left going through Luffield, the Doppler effect is basically when a car goes past and it goes... Effect. Don't have to tell you completely forgotten, or how it works, I should say. Turned on from that lap I did at Bathurst, or... video. I don't mean I'm gay. Got a key on the on the data, isn't it? One more lap. Just gotta keep Still none the wiser as to why it does that from design. So used to going through Brooklands in a set of course where there are no bollocks on the inside you can get it fine. And across the line. Two tenths up on that final lap because I didn't make that little mistake. But, okay. Right. We'll finish here. And uh, we will load the data.
So welcome back to Windows and now we need to look at our data. So I'm just going to go onto my log folder here. I just made a shortcut onto the desktop for it to be honest. Um, it's in Steam, Steam Apps, Comment, R Factor 2 and then Log in big letters. And then you just click on the one you want to look at which is this one, this is the most recent one. And here is our data. Pretty damn cool. Now some of this won't be there to start with. Uh, the engine RPM. That was there, speed was there, throttle was there, brake wasn't there, and then you got the, the G-forces as well, which I'm not really interested in, to be honest. Um, but the brakes I put in myself, so all you got to do is go to properties, and then add a channel, and then you can add all the stuff that you need to do. Now, um, so yeah, if you just want your brake position, you just double click on that, and then set the colors as you want. And then if you see it and you're like, oh, that's not where it should be, you just double click on, on the thing you want to change and then you just go to the mode, the minimum level, maximum level. So if I change that to 4K, because we weren't really much off idle for the whole thing, were we? So yeah, that's all good. I max that out to 320, which is 200 miles an hour. But we can see what's going on. Uh, we've got our outlap. We've got our in uh, our the lap that we did and we've got our in lap uh, well because that was because you know, this was actually our second time lap but it's counted it as the in lap because we abandoned just after as you can see here we where we got off the throttle and the speeds coming down and all that stuff but zooming in and looking at our you know uh, if I go to here just drag that across so even the turns are labeled so we've got turn one so we went flat through turn one Turn three, we had a bit of a lift for some reason. Then we got back on, and then we hit the brakes for the first part of the farm section just here. So we've got all of that. Now I need to go onto here and then go to properties. And then I need to go to add channel. And uh, what I want to do is I want to go tire temperature. Now, if I control click on some of these, I can do this, and then we can get our um, what's it called? So I need to. I'm going to delete these because I don't want them. And then I'm going to do the front tires up. I'm just showing you how to how to do this really. So we've got our front left and front right. Uh, and then our rears. Oops, I need to move that one down again. No, don't. There we go. And do that. Okay. And then we can see sort of what's going on. So we need to find Maggots and Beckets because that was where we really hammered those front tyres, which is here. Ish. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's here. So we've got a big spike in turn 15. That's, yeah, that's pretty much where we uh, had our issues. So we've got to try and find ways to keep that down. Now, how can we do that? Well, I might have to turn the pressures up a little bit. I might need to, uh, you know, that will keep the temperatures down. Um, I can add, uh, well, stiffen my anti-roll bar, I can soften my suspension, I can soften the, the third spring, there's a load of things I can do and I can see all of that just by looking at the data. That's pretty much why we're here, we're just going to be looking at the data and try and improve a setup that way and if I manage to get the setup a lot better than I already had it, if you see what I mean, I can uh, then drive around without having to have any extra data on, on the screen at all. So hopefully this has been a good indication in the, the beginnings of how to use MoTeC. Uh, I'm not really going to go into much detail now because I don't really have much of an idea of what I'm doing. Uh, if you have any tips on stuff I can do in this or how I can bring that temperature down because let's be honest, where is it? That, that is, that is cooking. That is huge. So yeah, 
I think this is really cool. I actually feel like I'm an actual racing driver right now, and it kind of adds to the immersion, and it helps me to build a setup for a car as well. So, if you thought this was interesting, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, then subscribe. Hit that bell thing. I, I keep forgetting to mention that. Hit that bell thing. I'm nearly at 500 subscribers, so I hope I hope I can get there by Monday. Let's get to 500 by Monday. Uh, that'd be really, really cool. And uh, thank you for all the support you gave me on my previous video as well. It does actually mean quite a lot. So until next time, I've been Aidan Millward. Remember to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all again on Monday for another video. Goodbye.